All right. Uh, this is Pit from Fiber Pit Forge. Um, I guess from here on out it's going to be Fiber Pit Forge and Homestead. Uh, today I'm going to be cold packing pork loin, quart jars, and home canning it. Um, the reason why we're changing up the channel is because ever since last October, November, my uh, after having walking pneumonia that time, it's caused some issues with my lungs and I haven't been able to be out in the forge this year. Uh, so I want to share things that we've learned um, my wife and I, and normally she would be here doing this herself or me helping her or us doing it together. Um, <clears throat> but she's gone with a friend to a eye appointment to be there and, and do some shopping. So I'm going to take care of this while she's gone and surprise her when she gets home. All right. So let me go ahead and get things set up so you can see how I'm going to cut the meat and pack it in the jars. Um, we're going to be using a cold pack method, which is basically taking raw meat, cubing it up, and placing it in the mason jars, leaving uh, you know one inch of head space. If it's fattier meat, you want to leave a little bit more head space. Um, and then for our elevation, it will can at 10 pounds pressure. And since it's quart jars, it will be 90 minutes. If it was pint jars, it would be 75 minutes. Um, I'm going to be using this little All-American today, which will hold seven quarts. And I'm hoping that I've got seven quarts worth of pork loin. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, let me go ahead and get set up, and we'll be right back with you. All right. Now for this, basically, I'm just going to take the pork loin over here. And slice it up. into cubes that's roughly around an inch or so and then we'll be packing them in the jar. Like I said, you know, as long as the meat's not super fatty, you can do a, an inch of head space. starts getting real fatty meat I'm going to want to take and leave more head space than that. Now for your elevation pressure that you can at may be a bit different than mine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pack this one jar and then I'll cut and come back when I'm getting ready to put in the canner so that you don't have to sit here and watch me pack and cut up for seven quarts. Um, my lungs are slowly healing. And we're hoping that, uh, that I'll be able to be back out the forge sometime soon. I've had a couple of false starts with thinking that I was going to be able to get back out in the forge. Um, and it just, just made things a little bit worse, so I'm trying to make sure that I take my time, and this time when I go back, I'll be good to go. I'm just going to, I don't know where my debubbler is, which is normally what I'd use to kind of get this down in the uh, jar. Now... The only thing I'm going to add to these, I will not add any water. Um, I will add a, a pinch of pink Himalayan salt. And that's it. Um, uh, some people have asked me about seasonings and stuff like that. And it's like I've explained to them, you know, seasonings, they tend to get uh, more potent with age. So, you know, the longer the seasoning sits in something, the stronger it gets. So if you do season, keep that in mind. And uh, there's the first jar, as you can see, packed pretty good. I will uh, grab... Oh, hold on. Let me 
grab my pink salt. some white distilled vinegar on it which I should have already had set up and wash my hands so I can do that and yes I wash my hands before starting I just don't want to be handling a whole bunch of stuff after I've cut the meat so I wash my hands in between if I go to do anything like that all right Alright, I got the rag with the white dispelled vinegar on it. You wipe the rings. The flats have been over here in some hot water. Place one on. Grab a ring. And just finger tight. Alright, I'll come back when I've got the other jars done and we get it in the canner. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and just put a just a little bit of salt in each jar. That's the six remaining jars. I'll sit that over there. Dump it back in its bag. I'll finish getting this meat cut up and then be back. Alright, now, I don't know if I'd actually mentioned it beforehand, but you want to make sure that all your jars are thoroughly washed before you start the pressure can. You do not have to sterilize them because the pressure and temperatures that you're getting at when pressure canning actually kill off all bacteria. But you do want to make sure that they are clean. Now, when water bathing, like in this, you want to make sure everything's sterilized. I just cleaned all the rims with the white distilled vinegar and what that does is that keeps any grease or other particulates off the rim so that you'll be able to get a good seal. Each one of these has about an inch of head space. These flats have been sitting in hot water, getting warmed up so that the uh, red seal inside of them will actually be softened up and sealed real well. Now we grab the rings. And when placing the jars in, you don't have to have the jar electron all. Um, you can actually just sit them in by hand because we're doing everything cold here. Uh, the pressure canner has not been heated up yet, and the reason being is because you do not want to put cold jars into hot water, as you can end up causing them to, uh, to bust. And you don't want to put cold meat in hot jars because, again, you can cause it to bust. All right. I'm going to place them in. Now this particular one uh, takes three quarts of water in the bottom of it to do this pressure canning. Um, our, our 20 quart one does the same and that's what allows it to help build the pressure. Now with these All-Americans you can actually just oil the rings there's no rubber gasket so I'm just simply going to pour just a couple drops of well that was a little bit more than what I wanted but basically just oil up 
the ring real well and that's what creates the seal on these um, all right I want to make sure that the gap all the way around is the same wash my hands get the oil off of it And then running that hot water enough to where I don't have to worry about it so much. Now with this one, you'll basically like a uh, tire pattern. You want to do opposite sides. Although with these, you want to do them simultaneously, and then move to the next. Make sure my gap is about the same all the way around. So that's one of the main things you want to keep on track. You don't want it to be sitting uneven. Alright, now with that being said, I can start getting some heat under it. <clears throat> and what I'm going to look for now is for it to vent out of this vent um, solid, solid stream, steam. And then I'll start a timer for 10 minutes because it has to vent on at a solid stream for 10 minutes before I can close this off and then work on getting up pressure. Now with this one, you adjust the pressure by adjusting the temperature of the stove. All right, and uh, I'll be back once that gets going. All right, I don't know how well you can see that. But there is steady stream. There's steam coming constantly out of the pipe. There's a steady steam coming out of those four vent holes, as you can hear. So now I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. And once that timer is ready, look at her steaming up the limbs on the camera. Once the time's ready, I'll flip this down and let it start building up pressure. All right, be back shortly. Right. It's been 10 minutes. Now, I'm gonna wait for the pressure, to get up to 10 pounds of pressure because that's what it is for our elevation here in East Central Alabama. Then I will adjust the temperature on the stove down to where it'll hold that pressure because you want it to stay there for the full amount of time. And for the quartz, it's 90 minutes. So once I hit pressure, I'll put on a timer for 90 minutes. And I'll keep coming back and monitoring that pressure. Make sure that it doesn't get too much above 10 pounds and that it definitely does not drop below it because if it drops below 10 pounds, you have to start your time all over again once you get back up to 10 pounds. So it's something that you got to stay close by to be able to keep an eye on and monitor. All right, see you in a little while. Here we are, just above 10 pounds of pressure. And I've turned it down to where it's right in, it's about on one. And that should hold me right there. I'll keep an eye on it. Now I'm going to set a timer for 90 minutes. And I'll see you when I go to pull them out of the canner. Alright, as you can see. Um, pressure's back down to zero. I have the vent open. And we're about to open this thing up. Canned for 
90 minutes. Now, the thing that you need to remember is whether it's chicken, pork, beef, it doesn't matter. Meats are all the same time, same pressures, the pressure is depending on your elevation. But the meats all cook for the same time. Set that over out of the way. Actually, I'll sit it right up there on top of that one. And now we're going to pull these jars out. And as you can see, they are steady steaming and full of nothing but pork broth and meat. I already heard one seal. Now they'll sit here for the next 12 hours without being moved. And you want them in an area that does not have a lot of air circulating, moving around it, or moving around them and all. Um, and as they cool down, the uh, the lids will seal. I did get just up over the pressure. Hold one moment. Instapot dinner. Ain't that beautiful? Looks like I had a little bit of siphoning in the one, and that's because I'd get up to about 12 and a half pounds at one point in time. But we'll leave them there. Let's see, let me come over here and see if I can't get you a little bit better view of those. All those look absolutely gorgeous. Ping. Yep, you hear that ping? It's another jar ceiling. All right, I appreciate. It. I hope you enjoy the video. Y'all have a blessed day.